Okay, and welcome to another lesson about uh, the U.S. history as we prepare for the EOC star test approaching. And so last video, we talked about President William Jefferson Clinton, which was from 92 and to 2000. Before that, we talked about President Bush and Barack Obama from 2000 to, 2000 to the current time. But today, we're going all the way back to the beginning of this PowerPoint, this, this specific PowerPoint. We'll look at the 1980s uh, until 88. Okay, and so um, let's go ahead and look at this. This is, this is the, a picture of all the living presidents that are still alive as of now. This is President Jimmy Carter, which we'll talk about in a, in a future video. This is President Clinton, who was president from uh, 92 to 2000. George W. Bush, uh, 2000 to 2008. Barack Obama, currently. Um, George H. W. Bush, George W. Bush's dad. Uh, who was president from 88 until 92, until he was defeated by him. And I'm sorry, uh, President Jimmy Carter was president from 1976 until 1980. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this PowerPoint. We're going to focus on the only guy that wasn't there, Ronald Reagan. Okay, he passed away a few years ago and his wife just passed away, I want to say a few months ago, if not a, last month. Okay, so this is um, a preview of... Ronald Reagan and some of the pictures we're gonna, we're gonna see. Um, let's just look at some of the stuff. He says this is gonna be a picture of the bombing in Lebanon. This is him, uh, where he um, an, an, uh, appoints the first female Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. Is gonna be an important one. Mr. Gorbachev tear down this wall. Um, he's known very famously for saying that as much as famously as Nixon's famous for saying I'm not a crook. Uh, this is an example of Star Wars, which was his. Um, um, it was called the Strategic Defense Initiative. It was referred to as Star Wars. That wasn't its real name, but as a uh, defense to against inter, intercontinental ballistic missiles, so nuclear missiles being fired at us. Um, this right here is, is a reference to, it still says, still waiting for that trickle. shows a regular old person um, waiting for a drop because what they, were, they would talk about was, um, or one of his, his thing with Reaganomics was called trickle-down economics, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, this person was still waiting for his trickle, his, his little piece of the pie. Uh, this is a reference to them calling the Soviet Union as Gorbachev right here, uh, which is head of the Soviet Union at that time. They referred to him as the evil empire. The Soviet Union is the evil empire. And so there's a picture of him as, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker or whatever. Here's um, Han Solo. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that was dumb. Darth Vader. Excuse me. And then finally, Iran's secret dealings, uh, Reagan's secret dealings with Iran. This is the Iran-Contra affair, which we'll all look at today. So let's go ahead and, and move on. The Reagan presidency. Reagan was a popular Hollywood actor before and during politics. Here's a picture of one of his movies, Bedtime for Bonzo. Uh, Reagan was originally a Democrat, which is normal in California. California is a very liberal place until he realized the federal government was too powerful and intrusive. Intrusive means that they, they can pry into your, um, your life, which is ironic that, uh, that uh, he's saying that the Democrat... Anyways, moving on. Reagan was elected governor of California and twice ran and lost for the presidential race in 1968 and 1976. In 1980, rising inflation and the Iran hostage cri situation gave Reagan the winning edge over President Carter for for president. Okay, um, that's important that you understand about what when we talk about Carter, we'll talk about the Iran hostage situation. But um, very shady stuff that went along with um, with uh, Iran and the hostage situation and, and Reagan. Anyways, Reagan selected H, George H.W. Bush as his vice president. So there, there's, uh, there's George W. Bush's dad right there. That's his vice president, okay? Moving on. So the 1980s saw a resurgence in conservatism. Conservatism, you're more likely to be pro-business. Uh, you want smaller government. You're anti-abortion, anti-gay marriage anti-welfare, um, pro-business, and uh, you want to deregulate um, businesses so they can just operate more freely without the government overlooking its shoulders. And so um, that's, what it, that's basically what conservatism is. Since the New Deal and FDR Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the size and powers of the federal government had been steadily increasing. The New Deal is important. It was the answer to uh, the Great Depression. Now, typically, you're going to see an increase in presidential powers when the citizens are scared. And so uh, many citizens were scared of not being able to feed their families or going broke or blah, blah, blah. And so they, they trusted 
Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, to, with the New Deal, and, and allowed him to stretch the powers of the American government very broadly. Okay. So Reagan decided it was time to cut down the size of the federal government by reducing taxes and federal leg regulations on businesses, okay, cutting taxes for businesses, and reducing federal regulations. That means cutting back, hey, uh, the EPA says you can only produce this much pollution. We're going to cut that back. You know, we're not going to, you know, they're, we're not even going to care about that anymore. Um, hey, we're going to find, EPA is going to find you if you're pouring toxic waste. Hey, we're not going to um, do that anymore. Uh, the SEC is in charge of, you know, um, investigating fraud on Wall Street, but that's too much government. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna let the, we, we trust those Wall Street brokers. They're gonna be all right. They're not. Gonna, they wouldn't cheat anybody. Um, he wants to increase private competition, and so that's just the basis of you know capitalism is that competition drives for a better product. It, you know, every time you see a Lowe's, you're gonna see across the street a Home Depot. Every time you see a CVS across the street, you're gonna see a, 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 a yeah Walgreens. And um, so these things just drive people to have lower prices, and, and so we, the consumer, benefit. And he wants to increase the strength of the military. So Reagan wanted to expand the size of the government in one direction, which is the military, while reducing it in another, which is taking taxes, okay? And so it's not, you know, hindsight is always 2020. not judging Reagan. Obviously, he was a president, and so he, he must be a very um, bright individual. However, um, to, to me, it just seems common sense that if you were going to cut taxes and increase spending in other areas, it's going to lead to huge increases in deficit. Um, however, the American people either didn't care or didn't understand or whatever, but this was allowed to go on for eight years, so let's move on. President Reagan's domestic policy. As Reagan took office, the main problem facing the nation was stagflation. Now, at first, I didn't know what stagflation was, so I looked it up. This is when inflation, which means high prices, is high. Okay, it's, it's very widespread. Economic growth slows, so businesses stop um, making new, new, new stores and new shopping malls and things like that, and unemployment remains high. And so Reagan's answer to the problem was called supply-side economics, a.k.a. Reaganomics. Reagan wanted to lower taxes and decrease business regulations so that producers could create large supply of goods. Okay, um, if you look at what we talked about earlier when we talked about the Great Depression, we, one of the lessons we learned from the Great Depression is that overproduction drives down prices. And so if the prices of goods are too high, if you produce more of them, theoretically, um, the prices would drop. And so that's what he believed. And he reasoned this larger supply of goods would drive down the prices and stop inflation. And he was um, correct. And this picture says, if you cut taxes on the rich, they'll invest that money and create jobs to everyone. Um, if anyone's familiar with Charlie Brown... In that situation, I forget what that young lady's name is, but um, as he goes to kick it, he's, she's going to pull it out of the way, and she's going to trick him. And so what this political cartoon is saying is that this it, are people saying that Reagan, uh, Reaganomics is going to work, we're going to cut down taxes to the rich, and they're going to invest that money and create jobs for everyone. And this is the American people, I'm assuming. He would go and trip, and then he falls on his back. And so that's, the, that's a well-known uh, comic book um, situation or whatever. So... Uh, <clears throat> he reasoned that, uh, so anyways, it would also lead to higher employment as business needed increased workers. And so he definitely cre created more jobs. And we see from 1983 into 1989, every year you're seeing, um, you know, millions of jobs created. Now, you notice it starts in 83, even though he was president until 80, uh, he started being president in 80. But it's going to take a time to turn a, 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 an economy around, okay? And so his first three years, I'm probably, you know, just... It would be like a new coach coming into a losing program. It's going to take about two or three years for him to start seeing success. And so that's exactly what we see here. And so I want to show you a video really quick um, about Reaganomics. Now, well, first off, well, we haven't gotten to that yet. Um, so this this video is definitely, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to stop the video here. And pick it up later because this video is uh, eight minutes long. One second.